spooky Ooh. shit time. How are you, James? Are you well? <laughs> I'm, I'm excellent. How are you? Not bad, not bad at all, mate. Looking forward to this. It feels like ages since we've talked. How come your face is like nice and yellow and, and human looking and mine's like all grey and ghastly and horrible? Uh, you're getting old, man, I think. That's, uh, Fuck that's you. The thing. I start my, you, youthful, my youthful demeanour, you know. <laughs> what was that? So, demeanour. Youthful, de youthful, <laughs> youthful charm. Um, yeah, we've got lots to get through tonight. We've got an interesting show. As ever in the comments, we are joined by our good pal. Um, for spooky shit time indeed. Fook oh, you're right, Fuzzy. You are the wrong side. You're sense. right. He's absolutely right. It's like Ant and Deck, isn't it? We can't be on the we can't be on the wrong side. It's like <laughs> Is that a thing yeah. with them? Oh yeah. Have you ever noticed that? Up. No, I've never noticed that. Absolutely. Of yeah. their entire careers, they've always stood. I couldn't tell you which ones. The which. tall one's on the left, I think. The one with the forehead is on yeah. one side. Um and the other one, yeah. I've no, they're always, that, always at the same side. Before, yeah. I wonder yeah. if if no one told me that and I saw them the other way around, would I notice like I'd be like something like I think you around. can't because the the world ends. I think there's kind of like okay, it. Yeah. yeah. See, dead man's agreeing, you see? OCD nightmare. Fuzzy, the power I possess. Fuzzy, we are here at your command. You you just tell us what you need what to do and we'll do it, mate. We'll do it. Um, listen, we've got lots to get through tonight. We've got just, lots of spooky stuff. Just what? before we start, uh, mm -hmm. for anyone watching at home, if you could just tell us that our volumes are about the same because I've watched back a couple of episodes and usually I'm too high or you're too high. So if someone could tell us at home, that'd be great. But we'll continue and on then, and they'll, they'll tell us in a minute. And then James will have to adjust because I don't know how to. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's my yeah. problem then to fix. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Sounds like a Keegan problem to me, that. Excellent. Um, okay, let, let's get started. Oh, Fuzzy's saying we are perfect. Perfect. Superb. Beautiful. Thank Finally. You. Okay, we, we need to save these settings so that we know. I never touch mine, settings. mate. I never I never no. fiddle with me notes. Sometimes, sometimes I fiddle with because I can do it from my side. So I turned off Echo. Like, <laughs> Echo. I put on echo cancelization so your fucking fan home isn't in the background anymore. Echo, echo, echo. echo, echo. Um, James is softer spoken. Didn't believe that. Christ. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's let's crack on. We've got lots to get through tonight. Um. I can't believe some of the cack we're going to talk about tonight, man. That Velma. But we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to it. I'm sure. Um. And James, before we start, th there's no there's no scream news this week. Um, do I have to cancel the show, or do what are we? What are we doing? No, so so I do have a little M Melissa Barrera additive okay. into one of the thank God for <laughs> one of the topics. <laughs> okay, oh, thank um, God for that. Yeah, I was we'll worried. That. We'll get to that later. Yeah, I was worried. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's start with a bit of Blair Witch. Um, now before we get into the news, um, Blair Witch. I remember when this movie first came out. All however many years ago it was now and it was one of these ones where i don't know if you get irritated in the same way as i do james but i get really really pissed off with all the news articles and the the now it's on instagram all kinds of people are vomiting in the cinema <gasps> people are running out people are having heart attacks in the cinema and i go and see these films and i think what a lot of old bollocks it's it's just i mean blair witch wasn't all that good to be fair well you it? saw this at the time didn't you yeah i did in the, yeah. in the cinema why would you right, say you... that? Why would you say that? Like it's back in the twenties or something like that. And it was black I, I, and black I, I, with I, a I, piano. I'm just purely stating straight facts here, Peter. Like you did, you did. I'm um, correct me if I'm wrong. You did see this at the time in the cinema. Yeah, I did. I yeah, did. So yeah, I did. Um, and you you didn't find it that scary? I didn't find it what? That scary? Not at all. No. Not particularly I, I, to compare I, to other. I tell you what, I, I found. It was a, one of those films that was over egged beyond belief. Like I said, people were saying, you know, oh my God, it's the most scary thing you'll ever see, you know, all the rest of it. Um, and it, it was, it was all right. It was interesting. It it didn't really have an end that jumped out at us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, I have to say, I have to be honest. Is that really the ending? Well, the ending's it, iconic. I, yeah, it, the guy standing in the anywhere. corner, yeah. and then the, this this moment here, you know, like it's yeah. so iconic. It's it's the piece of imagery from that movie. Like I think, yeah. it's a great cuck. ending. It's cuck. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the shaky film footage kind of stuff. I have to be honest. I'm not. Yeah, that was Adam Wingard, wasn't it? The guy that was the Godzilla Kong. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, a few people in the it. in the a few people in the comments here are just saying, um. I will say Peter's complexion is slightly worrying compared to James. You look a little of, blue in the face, Peter. Little grey, little grey, purple tones. I'm turning to Thanos. Um, I heard people <coughs> excuse me, rave about Blair Witch for years. I watched it and it was the biggest disappointment I can remember. I, yeah, I think it's over-egged. 
even as a non-horror fan, it did nothing. The people were annoying the trees. <laughs> Bollocks. Um, wasn't there a lot of shaky camera? There was me because well, it, it was found footage. Found footage but it? that was this created that genre. Like this was the yeah. first ever found footage. Wish it hadn't. And so it's groundbreaking. I think there's some fun. Oh, that'd be a good topic for we'll found put footage. That out for next week. Found footage yeah. movies. There's some phenomenal ones I think out there. Um, but yeah, no, this broke ground, and like I know they marketed it at the time as this was actually real, uh, which is clearly bullshit. But yeah, I, 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 you have to give it props and respect. I, I watched it quite late, so the unfortunate thing was so much of it had been lampooned and other things uh, okay. yeah. that I just recognized every scene, so I didn't really find it scary. Um, yeah. But I think it's a, it's a very solid film, definitely. Yeah. So what's the news? What's the what's the the current? So Bloomhouse and Liongate. Liongate are teaming up for a new movie, so no word on if it's uh, like a remake or a third installment to follow up or anything like that. But yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the last one. I know, you, so I, I know it shows the actual witch thing in it, which I think is like you maybe you shouldn't have done that because it's the never last gonna live one, up. It? Yeah, the it, it's just called Blair Witch, I think. Oh, okay. So there's like a big spindly monster thing. It's like well, uh, you, you right. know, maybe that kind of takes away from I think the mystery and the the, the scare of it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it was pretty. That was pretty good. Okay, I have to say I'm not particularly excited about a, another journey into the Blair Witch, particularly if it is the found footage kind of. Um, not had a found footage movie in a while now, so I'd I'd be I'd be game for that. Mm. Or maybe do it like the way Late Night did, like do it as a doc. It's a documentary. Yeah, a of, documentary like, with, with a narrator good. like talking about what happened afterwards or yeah. the lead up to it. You know, that would be interesting. I, I could get behind that. Yeah. Okie dokie, moving on. A little bit of Saw action. Now, th this isn't even remotely surprising because... So, Saw 11 was supposed to come out this year. That This was announced. I'm pretty sure, like, our second show or something, we were, like, Saw 11 2020. I'm what? sure I remember us talking about this and saying, Crikey, that's quick. That's Such a quick uh, turn. It was, it was yeah. within a year of the last one coming out, they had announced that the next one yeah. was going to be out. So, um, yeah, it's been pushed to next year. Like, there had been no cast, no... I think this is the same director as X. Um, no synopsis, like, filming, no word on filming starting. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not even remotely surprised. And you want these to come out in October, so I think this was, you know, inevitable. Um, yeah, and I think there's enough, like, looking at it, there's enough horror stuff coming out this year. Like, I think we're, you know, save it for next year. Work on it. Make it good. I'm happy to wait, to be honest. If, if, it's, if it's waiting because the, I don't know, tweaking the script or making sure all the, the correct talents lined up and all that kind of stuff. I'm happy. I'd rather they didn't rush it out. To well, be that, that's the thing. Saw was a year after year franchise yeah. and it declined as every movie went on. Yeah. They were just rushing the next one out. So yeah, I think it's the wise move here. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Uh, Fuzzy saying he's not a fan of found footage film, but Cloverfield's about, about it for me. Yeah, I enjoy Cloverfield. Mind. I enjoy Never seen that. it. You've never seen Cloverfield? Never seen it, no. Oh, James. That, now that big, is like a big turtle thing, isn't it? yeah but you don't really see it it is a, it is a bit Blair Witch in that you don't really see what's happening the monsters yeah. and things like that I think I think well it's a great a idea for a fan footage movie definitely yeah like a it is it footage. is worth a watch it's a good movie yeah. uh, but the sequel Fuzzy is that the one with um oh, John Goodman called John Goodman yeah Cloverfield I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, that, I've seen that one Clo the yeah. 10 Cloverfield Lane yeah that's yeah. very good which I was going to bring is, up later um for the main topic as well yeah, but it's, it's yeah. a good one that's yeah. cool and I never saw the third one Paradox or something no, I didn't watch Paradox either. Yeah. I think that it was... In fact, I might have started watching it and gave up. It's more sci-fi than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, Head, Dead Man, talk about flogging a dead horse to another level. I, I would agree with you, Dead Man, but I have to say the last Saw film really the surprised one. me. <laughs> it's the best yeah, movie. In really the enjoyed it. Like it was a soft reboot, kind of. Yeah, you could, you could probably watch the first one and then saw the last Saw film and forget the rest in the middle if yeah, you wanted, I really. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. I'm excited about this. I enjoyed the last one. Um, Fuzzy saying he didn't even know the third one existed. It's weird. I find the marketing for these films really weird, Fuzzy. They go out of the way to not link them to Cloverfield. It's like if hinted I, at, you know? And If I remember right, that was marketed as a different movie. Yeah. And yeah. when you went to see it, it was like, oh, it's actually a Cloverfield movie. I think don't, it didn't hit it the cinema, I don't like think. That. I think Paradox, Paradox, whatever you call it, was... Uh, um, Netflix? Netflix or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I think I think Ten Club Lane was just announced as like yeah. something else lane or something. And then it was like the first trailer was like, oh, it's actually a Cloverfield movie. I think the trailer didn't even give it away. I think it wasn't until because it, it's it's not really linked to 
the Cloverhill monsters until the very end, is it? Where he kind of gets she gets out and whatnot. Well, it's still not really. Well, you could. I mean, it's ambiguous yeah. whether it actually is linked, linked or not. But um, yeah. yeah. It's an, an odd way of marketing the movies, Fuzzy. I, I have to say, I, I, they don't. They make it quite vague. In it's a bit different, though. Movie. I like it. I like. I like trying something new. Yeah. Know? The third one's all about time travel and things like that, and different realities blending together and stuff. And it, it, I have to say, it didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me. Um. Okay. Next bit of news. Mm. Five mm. Nights at Freddy's. Six Nights at Freddy's, I guess you call this one. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Um, so this is coming out next year. I think they announced it for next year. So that's the kind of news. But uh, the Jim Henson Creature Shop, who did the animatronics for the last movie, um, put up like a thing that they're building a new thing. And, oh, not, you know, we're not saying what this is, but it's obviously, you know, a new animatronic for, for yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's. I think there's so much potential for this franchise. Like the first one was bad, <laughs> like pretty bad. I think there's, you know, maybe ten minutes of a good movie in there, um, but like it, I, I want this to do better. Like I want a good, a good one. So I'm, I'm willing to, to be looking forward to this. Like if it's to, so that they can improve it, you know, so they can make a good one. But do you think they've learned from the last one? Do you think, do you think they're gonna? Because I mean, it made a lot of money, didn't it? So the probably's very happy with yeah, it. That's that's the unfortunate thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, well, why change anything? Because <laughs> yeah. the last one worked. Um, yeah, for me, you I need mean, to I lean think heavily would... into the horror. You know, lean into the horror because for me, there was no there to enjoy. Yeah, and it was wasn't it was a PG thirteen, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, they wanted think... kids because was... like for some reason, Five Nights at Freddy's like you go to Smiths and there's in the toy aisles. Yeah, there's fucking yeah. Five Nights at Freddy's shit everywhere. Like kids, kids love this franchise. So like, you, I suppose you want them to be able to see it as well. Yeah. But that sucks. Like, I don't, I don't want yeah. that. Or do two versions. Do an R-rated version, you know? Like, yeah. So that, Fuzzy's you know, saying, who's the audience, work. teens? I, I think yeah. you're right, Fuzzy. I, I don't know who it's aimed at. It's a bizarre tw- property. I think it's, actually, I think it's literally it's 12-year-olds. Like, I think that's, yeah. what they, that's what they go for, you know? Like, and my screening was fucking packed with, with like, yeah. 11, 12, 13-year-olds. So you know? yeah. I mean, I have to say, this this doesn't excite me at all. Um Unless there's a drastic change in it, unless I'm, unless we see some big changes, I'm curious about it. Like I, yeah. I, I'll keep an eye. You know, I, you know, you ever make a trailer and go, oh, that actually looks really good, or or I don't think they've announced a director, but if we get like a really strong director to do yeah. it, this could be even amazing. Is you know? um is Matthew Lillard down to come back into it? So I think he signed on for three. Okay. To my to okay. my memory, so yeah, he, he might come back for it. So I hope yeah. so because he was the best thing in the first one. Fuzzy seen some adults go mad. Yeah, Super Sorrel, who we do a few shows with, as you know, he's absolutely obsessed with this stuff. Um, and I, I, I'm with you, Fuzzy. I just, it doesn't, I've not played the game. So th- to be fair, I've not, I've not experienced the game. That, that might change my opinion of it. But just based purely on the last movie, I'd rather have a Willy's Wonderland 2, if I'm honest. Uh, no. <laughs> no agree? No agree? No? no. 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 Um, let's no. move on. Let's let's move. Let's move on. Um, this is exciting. I yeah, am quite excited exciting. about this. So, Kelly Murphy's officially signed on for twenty eight years later. It's funny how it, like we're actually approaching. Like it'll be when yeah. this comes out twenty four, twenty five years. So it's like yeah, it actually makes sense. Um, it's amazing. I think because I thought he would have kind of been above this at this point. So like I'm, yeah. I'm excited that that he's coming back for that. I think that will definitely give it a big boost. Because he's got such star power now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but he's probably he's got a lot of links to the franchise, hasn't he? I mean, it was it, just kind it of a big break at the start, big star it? and roles, and you know, yeah. 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 Um, I am so excited about this. They want Nia Nia De Costa, who did the Candyman movie, yeah. to direct it, um, and she's phenomenal. I thought I'd love. To, I think that's a great choice. So, so I think did she do the Marvels as well? Yeah, she did the Marvels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I, when I was reading the article about this, I'm sure it said that she was coming to to, to direct this the um second part of the new trilogy so it's three movies 28 years later is going to be set in, it's a new trilogy of movies and she's oh. doing the second part or something okay yeah i didn't i didn't i didn't know that yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Do you need, which is interesting you think which that, is interesting though? and I, what do you, I mean like like if you're going to do like a two-part or do two months and then years you know like or years then yeah decades or something um would you call it like 29 years later or something yeah but, I mean, everything's got a trilogy these days, hasn't it? That's how yeah, the... Yeah, I suppose. So, I mean, I, I love this universe. I'm excited to see more from it. Um, yeah, Fuzzy, it's uh, Danny Boyle again. 
from what I understand. And that's probably why Killian is getting back involved, isn't it? Yeah. Because of his you, connection with him, you know? Do you think they'll still be fat? Because at this stage, like, like at the, you know, obviously the first one's only a month in, so, like, the zombies are fairly fresh. Yeah. Do you think in this one they're going to be all decayed and, like, a so. classic Romero zombie kind of look? But, like, yeah. they'll, they'll you probably have a mix. Some of them will literally fall apart, like... Yeah. You'll have a mix, won't you? Because you'll have people who are currently being turned and then ones who've been around for X number of years or whatever. Yeah, I'm excited. And they to might see do something they... totally different. You know, they might go something totally, totally. Well, that's it. I'm, I'm just excited to see what the world will look like in this at this point. You know, I think I think it will focus more on people being the bad guys as well. well I suppose that's kind of an element in the first couple yeah. as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that'll be a big focus. But I'm looking forward to this anyway. Looking forward. To it. Should be fun. Should be fun. Oh, we've got Jason in. Nice of you to join, mate. Hope you're well. You we need more zombie movies like Twelve Days Later. Absolutely, Jason. Come, couldn't agree more. Um, I can't remember the last cinema zombie movie. I saw. I think Walking Dead kind of just took over everything in terms of zombie, didn't it? And Ooh, that's a good question. Last movie zombie. I can't I don't know. Um, I mean, World Zed War Z. Like World War Z. World War Z was like ten years ago, man. Um, yeah. There was one I saw that was. It gave me last of us vibes but if, i think it focused on a little girl and she was like a zombie but she's in control or of herself right. or something like that it was like and um Gemma archerton was in it as yeah. like a mother figure to her I can't remember what it was called but it was, it was decent i guess the maze runner movies kind of have a zombie-ish never seen them, them so i that's absolutely yeah. news to me <laughs> you're, not, you're not you're not missing much mate you're no, not missing no. much the, the last two movies or the, last, the middle one or something has things running around the desert that are like a bit zombie like. Zombieland yeah. Two was fairly recent enough, like in the last three, four years. So. Which one? Zombieland Two. Yeah. Yeah, shite, wasn't it? Shite. <laughs> really Disapp- wasn't worth the wait. Disappoint. Man. Very yeah, disappointing. Yeah. Um <laughs> oh God. Obviously we've got to have a bit of fucking terrifier news. Just franchise won't go away. Um Terrifier Three. Hey Efren. Terrifier Three also wrap filming. So that's that's another thing. But Nell Tiger Free who starred in the first omen. Um, wants to like take on ter- she wants to star in a terrifying movie effectively she's a great actress I think she's fantastic just, she, they'd be fucking lucky to have her so yeah, yeah just give her that I mean that feels to me like a step down not that I'm possibly dissing the, the terrifying movies I've not seen them but yeah. they feel kind of beneath now her stature if you know what I mean yeah I mean you know those those actors that have been in the first two are like making moves they're like fairly popular now like you see them at conventions and all that like and now tiger free like aside from game of thrones this is really it um <laughs> yeah but F- fuzzy so- when we review when we review this movie at some point me yeah. and james should both wear one of those hats this- do you yeah. not think <laughs> we're not even going to be on camera but we'll be wearing no, the hats no, just yeah, so you yeah. know fuzzy that we just so fuzzy hat. knows we've got yeah, the hat yeah, on. exactly yeah, yeah. yeah take a little behind the scenes selfie yeah. um but yeah, she's she's a fantastic actress, like, and obviously she's must be a fan of the franchise. So if she wants to do a fucking give it to her. I don't know yeah. if Terrifier Three is going to be the last one though. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I've we'll still see. yet to see any of these movies, and I have to see. One. I have no desire to see them. I don't, I don't know why it just doesn't feel like it's going to be my my kind of horror. It, it is everything you hate. Yeah. <laughs> about yeah. Movies, yeah, the gratuity and stuff. Um. But I, I I understand. I you watch it and you're like I get why people yeah. like it. But I just like I like a bit more from my horror films than just the kills. You know. Like, yeah, yeah. Everyone wants to see you in that outfit. Everyone, that's the the outfits we're gonna be wearing when we pick you up from the airport in November, mate. We'll be dressed just like that. We oh for you. yeah, we'll stand there with balloons. It'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okey dokey. Mo- moving on. I'm feeling very negative tonight, James. Very, yeah. very negative tonight because this again, I've never seen a scary movie film in terms what? of this this horror franchise. Um, it just doesn't feel like it's my cup of tea. So I, I will say there's a sharp drop in quality after the second one. I think the first one is great, like genuinely a great spoof movie. Uh the second one is decent. And then the the, the they they're just fucking nonsense after that. Um but the first one, like, is a good mix of, you know, it was, it was it was fresh at the time. Like, there wasn't really much spoofy movies at that point. Um, so it's primarily screen. There's a bit of I Know What You Did Last Summer. Um, you know, and there's kind of various scenes, like, kind of, like, Blair Witch is, uh, you know, parodying mm-hmm. it as well. Um, but I, I watched this in the last couple of years, and I, I think it still holds up. I think it's still a fun movie. So, like, yeah. Um, so that we're going to go a reboot. 
So I'm just curious what that looks like. Like, well, you know, the kind of the the where horror is at the moment. Like, what do you? Like yeah, in? but who's in it as well? Do you know what I mean? Who who's going to be? Who's your up and coming comedians that would be in this kind of film? You know. So well, that that's an interesting point because, as I said, I promised you some Melissa Barrera news, and here we have it. Uh, Melissa Barrera says she's open to starring in this. Really? Jeez. Yes, no, I guess. Not just, as a, just as a middle finger, effectively, to fucking um, scream, you know, <laughs> to just go, all right, I'll star in the parody movie. And yeah, um, that'd be interesting. I think, like, because they often, you know, they, they, we had kind of Charlie Sheen and stuff like this in these movies, in the later ones, anyway. Um, like Leslie yeah, Nielsen some, was in it as well, wasn't he? Was Leslie Nielsen he was, in one? He was in the third one, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, they get some good people for it, but like the script, you know, the scripts aren't really great. And like, I think later on, they're just not that funny. Um, but I, I, I think there's definitely potential if you get a good writer to do it, if you don't just, like, I, they can often be lazy. And I think you, we saw it later on with like Date Movie and Epic Movie and Meet the Spartans. I think they, this is the... This is my fear for this. I think I watched a little bit of Meet the Spartans. Yeah. And I might have watched a little bit. Did they do not into their superhero movie? There was a superhero uh, based superhero one. superhero movie, yeah, with Drake Bell, yeah. It was just awful. I yes. mean, just... Yes, I'm probably not the age demographic, dare I say, but just shite, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, I think, like, the the first two are genuinely great. Like, the humor's not... It's a bit... It's silly, but it's not, like there's some clever jokes in there, you know, as well. And I, I don't know, maybe it's also because I love horror movies so much that the humor is mm. just right up my alley. Um, but yeah, I was never a fan of like the, the kind of later one. I think non routine teen movie is a good one. That's you know, Chris Evans and, and yeah. stuff in that one. Um, yeah. Efren's saying reboot. Good. Why would you do a reboot of Airplane? No, so don't do one a scary movie. Efren, they're doing a reboot of The Naked Gun starring Liam Neeson. That's going to be an interesting one. And Fuzzy, give me Hot Shots or Naked Gun any day. I'm with you, Fuzzy. Haven't watched Hot Shots Part Deux for years. Love that one. Have you seen that one, James? Um, is that Charlie Sheen? No. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, but yeah, the, I yeah. mean Charlie Sheen's in it, but the star is is um, is it Lloyd Bridges, who plays the president? And he has a lightsaber is it, is fight. It, is it not a Rambo like kind of he shoots chicken at someone? That's Charlie Sheen. He, he gets yeah. a chicken in a bow and arrow and shoots in it in that movie. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen the movie. Yeah, it, it Ron Atkinson's in it. It's um, yeah, it's a very very yeah. good film. I, I will say though, I, like there was a movie out last year called The Blackening, which uh, coming it. out of it, it's is a spoof movie. And like in it, I was like, this is very stale. Like this style of humor, yeah. we don't get this anymore. And it's like I didn't really miss it. So yeah, I this could go. It's most likely going to be bad, but I I have a little hope that maybe I, you get a good writer and it could be a clever kind of take on horror. I mean, movie, I'm. You know? I'm going to say something, and please don't cancel, but this kind of humour was very much of its time. I, I don't know how you get away with it these days without it being kind of, you know, everybody burnt at the stake. and Because you can't make some of the kinds of jokes that were in those kind of early films in this kind of movie, I don't think. Yeah, um, a lot of the jokes in it are like just a scene from a horror movie, a famous scene, and just do a funny version of it, you know. So okay. like, yeah, you're not getting necessarily political or yeah, kind of offensive in it typically. Okay. You know? Well, when this comes out, I'll watch the first one, and we can yeah. we can maybe do a review. That being said, there is a whole thing about one of the characters is gay, um, okay. like obviously gay, and nobody can tell, you know, and so it's, it's kind yeah. of a running gag there, um, in the first two movies. But it's actually one of the funniest jokes in it as well. But Fuzzy's got me reminiscing over Hot Shots now on top of Holly. Have, have you seen the first Hot Shots, James? Um, I, I, possibly. I don't know. It's just sure. superb. My favourite scene in that movie is where the... I'm sure it's Lloyd Bridges um, is standing in his office and he's got a painting on the wall of the airfield and he's shouting at the painting, Bill! Bill. And he turns and he kind of says to the guy, say, I've known that guy all my life. And morale's, morale's shot to shit on this base. He's not even talking to us. <laughs> he's just, he's, he does stupid stuff all the time. It's a really, really cool. I've undersold it there. Really. Um, white Chicks being made now. Absolutely made. Absolutely. Like white, just, white Chicks just, is a funny movie. Fuck. I wish they made a second one. That's the guys that did the original Scary Movie, the, the Wayne's Brothers, Fuzzy Mansion earlier. And they're great, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we could do a Fuzzy. Scary Movie? Mm -hmm. No hot shots. Um, oh, for uh, yeah, for your time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, you're seeing white chicks is great. It's it's really not, James. I like it's it. It's awful. 
But I was 10 when I watched it the first time and so much of it's like kind of making my way downtown, you know, like, yeah. and I yeah. need you. Yeah, let's move on. We got let's really off topic on. here, didn't we? Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. move on. Just because we know Fuzzy's watching, we like to slap a bit of Godzilla news in because we, yeah. we know he likes that. So this is Monarch Season 2 has been greenlit, is that right? Correct, yep. Yeah. Um, so as well as that, there's going to be several spin-off. They're going to do more MonsterVerse shows, like spin-off shows. Um what <laughs> so I think, like what, what do you do like what, what, what other stuff do you, and i mean no like if you pick a random kaiju and follow that thing it's like who fucking cares you know but the point of this is and did you finish monarch did you finish no, the series no but you can spoil it if you want i don't care well i, I didn't finish it either because <laughs> I, I lost my subscription i think it was yeah. um i got to episode five or something like that. but it suffered exactly the same as as all of the monsterverse movies because the budgets for these shows are pretty good but putting something like Godzilla on screen costs a lot of money, doesn't it? So you focus almost, you know, most of your show on the human element. Exactly, and as yeah. usual, the human element is dog shit. I'm not interested in in Monarch. It was, is this guy's sister alive and his dad's alive? I couldn't give a toss. Do you I, know what I mean? think monsters smashing each other for fucking nine episodes wouldn't be very yeah. entertaining. You know, you need some good... Uh, I'm sorry, Fuzzy. I, you, know, I, <laughs> you, have to, you have to love me as I am. You've got to um, remember, Fuzzy. He's about 13. You've got to remember. Um, so, yeah, like, like you have to focus on the human characters. Now, I would actually really like a follow-up, if you're going to do spin-offs, like other oh, shows in the Monster Race. Go back to the time period of Skull Island yeah. and follow something. I know Monarch did a little bit. It had the double... Tiny uh, little bit at the thing. start, didn't it? And yeah. There, yeah, there was uh, John Goodman. But I'd like yeah. to see, like, you know, get Tom Hiddleston for one of these, you know, and let's see what happened mm -hmm. to his character or Charles Dance, you know, yeah. from Godzilla, uh, the second movie. See what happened to him, you know. Jason saying episodes 8, 9, 10 were brilliant. I, I think I dropped off because I did, I had a free subscription or something, and I, I lost the subscription around episode 5. Um, I think I okay, Jason. In and I, I, will, I will catch up. I will get another um, subscription at some point and watch Obviously, it wasn't that to important to watch, though, because. Yeah, we yeah. went into the new one and it was yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> didn't miss anything, yeah. you know. So Fuzzy saying he thought Monarch was a chore. Can't even remember how it finished. I have to say, Fuzzy, that's how I felt with it. it each episode, it was a, I've described it like this before to you, James, when I'm talking about different shows and things. Yeah. There are some shows like Stranger Things, for example, or actually using a current thing, Fallout, which I am absolutely loving, yeah. where I sit and I'm glued to the TV. And then there's shows like Doctor Who now, and I would put Monarch in this, where I'm lying on the set a on my phone with this playing in the background, yeah. and I'm just not engaged because it's oh, this just is a show you'd have to focus on though. I would think, but it's yeah. just cack. It's just yeah. drivel. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. yeah. Anyway, oh Jesus. So, Velma season two has been announced, and it's coming next week. It's coming on Thursday, the twenty sixth of April. Uh, there was a poster, no trailer, and we're we're yeah six six days out from that, and we've seen G nothing of it. James, who cares? Who who gives a shit about this show? And now I have to say, I've not seen season one, but I've certainly heard enough about it to know that I don't think this is for me. I've never seen people gather together to hate something so passionately <laughs> as, yeah. as this show, um, and I think that's why it's. It was successful enough to get a second season. People just hate watched it, you know? Like, it stirred up so much controversy that people tuned in. I watched it out of out of morbid curiosity um, of what it would do. And so it, sorry, so is on. it really that bad? Is it... Is it Because people... You're a Scooby-Doo nerd, fan, yeah. whatever you want to call yourself. Yeah. You know, people were saying this is offensive to the original cartoon, to the characters in that show. Yeah, I think it's... It has no reverence for Scooby Doo at all. Like the characters are completely, and I don't even mean like race changing. Like I think that's fine if that's what you want to do. Um, but like they just have none of the characteristics that you associate with any of those characters. Like Fred is like a, you know, Fred in the is a bit of a, a dumbass, I guess. In some of the Scooby Doo stuff, he's a himbo, you know. Yeah. But in this, he's like a little man baby, uh, with a with a small dick, and they talk about how small his dick is all the time. And no. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a running joke in the in the in the show. Um, and Velma's just a 
bitch <laughs> like the entire show like she's just self-centered horrible mean-spirited you know and like like you look at some behind the scenes in the lead up to this of like Mindy Kaling who's one of the creators who plays Velma saying how much she loves Scooby-Doo and how strong a character Velma is and and there's just none of that in this at all like it's it's kind of crazy and I think the suspicion is that they wanted to do like a Riverdale parody thing and Warner Brothers offered them Scooby-Doo and they said okay well nobody's gonna watch this unless we attach it to Scooby-Doo so let's do that but did they get Scooby right is Scooby Scooby's well not in portrayed? it they're not allowed to have Scooby-Doo in it now I I think it's 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 interesting right there's sort of a setup for how you could bring Scooby in. There's sort of a like a, an explanation for why you'd have a talking dog in this. Um, and I remember looking at, a, just last week, a comment on a YouTube video. And someone said, and I love this, said, um, I wish the show had the balls to not do Scooby and just do Scrappy instead. And I actually think that's a really good idea because there's so much shit from Scooby-Doo's history that you have like a free pass to just take cracks at. Like Scooby Dumb, mm-hmm. you know, Scrappy Doo, all that shit. Um, why are you making fun of the main characters, you know, or like the mm-hmm. concept of Scooby Doo? Like, just like, you know, shit on the bad stuff that people hate about Scooby Doo. I think that's yeah. like actually a genuinely good idea. So, so, f- so for me, having not seen it, but having read a lot of stuff and then having just listened to you talk about it, I've got absolutely no desire to watch this bullshit. This doesn't appeal to me in any shit. In fact, I think I'll probably get angry watching it. It's fascinating. Um, it's it's really interesting, but I'm I'm very curious now for season two because like obviously they they've seen how much people hate this. So there's a couple of routes they could go. They could either just ignore all of that and just continue the show as is with the same style of humor, or they could lean into the hatred and say, okay, well if people are gonna hate the show, let's really fucking make them hate it and like just shit on the characters even more and go even harder on it. Or but- you could pivot and try and actually make the show good. And I'm very curious to see what direction this is going to go in. I think there's been that much free press and PR about this because people hate it, the original series, that they'll just keep going and doing what they've been doing. It's 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 getting them attention. Isn't it? And it must have made some money because it's been, you know, a very quick turnaround for a season two. That's the, the irony, I think, is that if this was like good or just decent, it wouldn't have got season two. It got season yeah. two because people hate it and so many people watched it because they, they hated it so much. And with Warner Brothers cancelling shit left, right and centre as well. So this is the thing that they said that they go through with. But yeah, it's, it's it was just a year. A year turnover, I think, is really impressive for an animated yeah, series. Yeah. And you know, I, I think, you know, to, to give a credit where credit's due, I think visually the show actually looks quite good. Like the colour palettes, the animation is nice. There's some positive. I don't think it's the worst thing ever made, but it's just not... Like why is this? Why does this exist? Who's this for? There's you know? your there's your tagline for the for the DVD. Not the worst thing Those ever made. <laughs> that, that, that'll that'll draw in the crowds, won't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, bullshit. Last day, though, I'll be we'll be talking about this. I got you. Oh, know, you're you're gonna make one. me watch this, aren't you? You're gonna make us watch it. You can watch it if you want to. I'm gonna talk about. I might group episodes in, into two or four, and as we do this show, I'll talk about like what happened in the newest episodes or something like that, but it's, it's fascinating. It, unless like the first two are just like, there's nothing interesting to talk about, and then I'll just not watch it anymore. Cause, okay. But like, I'm, I want a, an adult Scooby-Doo thing so badly that I'll accept this. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just, that's, I, I'm so passionate. Like, you see, you're the problem, mark. Keegan. Yeah. You're the problem. That's why this dog shit's been churned out. Yeah. But like I, I just like there's such a market for a, a, a Scooby Doo project aimed at adults, you know. Like it's a shame that this is the thing we got, but like I want that, so I'll just for my fix. I'll, you do I'll love that it. dog, don't you? You do, do. love that. He's dog. not in the show though. Put Scrappy in it. That'd be funny. Yeah. Okay. Splat. <laughs> Let's see what we've got in the comments. Um, I know I got ten episodes. That's for sure. I never got to ten. Oh, Fuzzy's talking about um, Monica. I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm the same, Fuzzy. I'm the same. Um, he's bloody obsessed with Scooby. I'm actually wearing uh, my Scooby Doo shirt today. Jesus <laughs> God. One of my yeah. several. So. Um, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> and isn't the writer and excuse me, director the person the the voice? So, of yeah, Mindy Kaling. So she was right on like that. She's very talented right on the Office and everything. Um, like created the Mindy Project. Yeah, I don't know. If she's a writer. She's not credited as a writer on this, but it's pretty clear that like Velma is, you know, has various characteristics that she has, you know. So she's obviously got a lot of influence there. 
Um, cack, 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 cack. Yeah. Okay, let let's talk comic books for a little bit. Uh, palate um, cleanser. Let's do it. Palate cleanser. Let's uh, let's just wet the old whistle with a bit of comics. So we've got issue two of Ghost Rider: Final Vengeance. Have you read any of this, James? I have not. Um, do you want to give me the little? The little yeah. So I mean, it's a, it, you know what? It's 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 the same shite in terms of oh, Danny he's lost the spirit of vengeance and it's gone to somebody else and blah 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 blah. The first issue had the spirit of vengeance kind of going around and visiting various MCU characters and it was interesting. Okay. And it's ended up in Parker Robbins, who is the Red villain mode as the Red Hood. Oh, Red Hood, um, the Hood. The Hood, sorry, the, the Hood. Hood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which is a character that's been around for a number of years. Really interesting character. Started off as kind of just a lowly thug. And then he gets this demonic cape and some boots, I think, which give him the ability to kind of teleport, turn vis- invisible and fly and things like that. Um, he was very big during kind of the the um, uh, Siege of Asgard and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, he's now been in, in embedded with the power of the, the, the spirit of vengeance. This is issue two, where he's kind of first embraced it, and we get to see his version of the Spirit of Vengeance. We'd see him on his on his bike and all that kind of stuff. Um, have to say, wasn't expecting to enjoy this. I was reading it through curiosity more than anything else. This was a cool read. I did enjoy this. It's it's surprising me quite often um, that Marvel comics are quite willing to go pretty graphic. I don't know why I had in my head that Marvel comics was for kids again. Do you know what I mean? You you read a lot of the I stuff. I think your Spider Mans and stuff are, but like yeah, this is absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So in this, you know, we get cool scene there where he, um, some poor old vagrant wanders into his house and he literally burns him to death just for a laugh. You get a really cool scene in a in a um, in a diner where he brushes against the the waitress and it, he kind of lists all the things she's done. In a in a life, so like you know, when you are six, you stole a, um, a lipstick from the store. When you are fifteen, you kicked a cat. When you are such a, because you can see everybody's sins straight away, which I thought was really cool. The bit that I really liked is near the end, he's going to try and recruit a new team, and he goes to this vampire hangout, which is the last panel there, and it was very reminiscent of that opening scene in the first Blade movie, where yeah, you've got yeah. kind of the disco and stuff, and there's bodies hanging and people are bleeding and stuff um so yeah so for me it was a good read it's kept us interested enough to to pick up certainly the next couple of issues and see if it's if it's um as good as it goes on so is this in the same this is a mainline continuity in it yeah 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 so blade because i'm i think an issue behind on the new blade the, the current blade run so i'm curious if this tie in I do. It's a really cool villain that that's kind of set up for that one too. Well, it's it's interesting that this issue links with vampires because there's a big vampire kind of crossover going on at the moment. So I do wonder if that's going to link in with this in some way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a, a cool cool book. I enjoyed it. Fuzzy saying my ghost writer came today. I haven't read it yet, but I'm loving the covers. Happy to give it a chance. Ag- exactly, Fuzzy. I'm the same as you, mate. I'm giving this a go. I'll give it a couple of issues, um, until it starts to bore us. At the moment, I'm enjoying it. Is that a gun he's holding on the cover? We've not seen that yet, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, looks like two guns. I'm cool, sure Parker Robbins, when he's oh, the he does hood, have, he has, has two two yeah, guns. Yeah. yeah, he's going to be the villain in Ironheart, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, have you seen Anthony, the image? Anthony Ramos is playing them. Who I love. Yeah, yeah. He's, I wanted him for a... Robbie Reyes. Uh, or Robbie yeah, for the the Ghost Rider for the like the mainline. Yeah, movies. didn't we see him at one of the cons we were at? No, no, that's that? Gabriel Luna. Oh, that's Gabriel um, Luna. Uh, this is the guy from Hamilton and uh, ah, right. in the Heights and Transformers. He's in the new Transformers. Yeah. He's the main character. Very bizarre take on the character. He's got like a PVC cloak and hood, which I wasn't so keen on in yeah. the move in the show. Um, I don't know why, but anyway, yeah, interesting. So good book, worth worth a pickup. This is quite exciting. It's now been announced. You know, Marvel bought or had the rights to Aliens and Predator a while ago. And they've been publishing Aliens and Predator comics for a little while now. We've had some crossover with Predator and Wolverine. And now we're getting, um, or we are getting Aliens versus Avengers. Awesome. Now, I think this will be cool. But the thing that's got us most excited really is it's by Jonathan Hickman and Ezad Rybek who both did the work on the Secret Wars series a while ago. Okay. Jonathan Hickman, we know, is a phenomenal writer. 
if he doesn't get too complicated. Um, and Ezad, I can't pronounce his not name wrong, but he's an amazing artist. That art in Secret Wars was friggin' amazing. Mm. So this is a four issue limited series. I'll definitely pick on this up. And I can tell you now, th this will have, I have no doubt, some absolutely phenomenal variant oh, covers I'm coming on. I've been picking up a few of these. I, yeah. I honestly, even like, I'm looking at the logo, I like the title yeah. logo. I love it. Like, it's so, so good. So, so do you get the logo? Do you get the logo? It's AVA. Yeah, yeah, it is AVA. But it's also, when you turn it upside down, it's the, um, oh, what's what's the Wayland? Oh, Wayland Tani. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh really? Oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's supposed to represent aliens versus um, that's, Avengers, that's, but it's that's also that's the wheel. I thought, I thought it was just a, a take on the yeah. AP logo. Yeah. Um, so remember a while ago there was a Marvel's Alien comic, and yeah. you were speculating that it was in the Marvel universe. Is that prelude to this? No, I don't think it's linked. I think this okay, is this just, is separate. Just separate. Yeah. Okay. This is um, yeah, I mean, this is this is going to happen sooner or later, wasn't it? Yeah. When Marvel owns them, and yeah. we've had crossovers before with like the, the DC characters and, and stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm very excited. To like like this. I like, say, I think it'd be cool. The fact that it's Jonathan Hickman writing it gives it a bit of weight in my eyes. You know, he's a, he's when Jonathan Hickman doesn't get too bogged down with far out ideas, he writes a solid story. So I think I think this could be very very interesting, very cool. Um, Fuzzy saying, looking forward to this. Didn't know about it. That bloody 20th century Fox logo hurts me. I couldn't agree more, mate. It gets wandering. right on my tits. It's, I think it's supposed to make it look more like a movie. It's thing, just, you know? it's just ugly on the covers, you know. You'll get some stunning virgin covers of these, but I reckon there'll be a whole ton of, um, of variants. I for assume these. you want uh, a Thor fighting as an amorphous. Is it? We, we, we have had those already, and it's a very good. So the, when oh, there was Marvel, like a yeah, sorry, there was a. Uh, they did a, a aliens anniversary or something like that yeah before. when marvel first got the property i think they did like every comic had an alien versus the character cover but yeah. it wasn't linked at all to the story in the yeah. book you know it was just a cover um and the thor one was pretty good actually i think it might have been daniel warren johnson um who did the cover yeah but yeah i think this is going to be great yeah. bit of toy news for you james look at that look. Uh, no i was scrolling through the slides earlier <laughs> that's fucking fascinating by what what is this like what, what do you mean what is it what is it like, is it supposed to be catzilla is that it Cat, is that, that it? is exactly oh i've gone funny that's exactly what it is it's catzilla okay. now fuzzy will be ordering these i'm sure the, you get it in two styles you can get your, your kind of your ginger cat which i think you'll probably want and then you can get your, your black colored cat with the pink spikes down the back each cat comes with two head sculpts you've got the open mouth there and they're just the kind of the pensive look um they get attachments so you can click into the mouths kind of a flame breath or an atomic hairball breath or whatever you want to call it um and you can buy that kind of decimated cityscape to go with it okay the city I, I, is that separate yeah separate that, separate that's, purchase. A, that's just a cool thing to have on its own i think for yeah all the figures, now, you know? now these aren't one six scale these are about the size of a can of coke so they're not they're not that, oh, that big. sucks yeah what do you mean that sucks? Were you going to buy a one six one, scale? I'd want a life size cat. Like a, I want it to be the size of an actual cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't see because of the light. How much do you think these are going to cost you then? For a, um, oh, I've got it wrong. It's not Kitty Zilla. It's, it's even better than that. It's what? even better than that. Meow Zilla. Meow. You had, you had Cat Zilla. Meow Zilla. Meow Zilla. Meow Zilla. I assume yeah. Cat Zilla is already taken something else. Meow, meow Zilla is going to cost you. $75. The base is going to cost you $60. Jesus. You want to order a few? You going to order a couple of them? Um, so my girlfriend's mom is obsessed with cats. And I think this would be a pretty funny present for her. So I, I'm going to get one actually for her. <laughs> like, well, he's like, not impressed. I'm joking, I will. Um, yeah, she'll love these. <laughs> I think I'll just stick this. Because like literally, I mean, if you go to her house, there's just cat stuff. Like cat statues and cat like figures everywhere. So like this, is, you'll get a laugh out of this. Are you getting the ginger one or the the, the black one? The black one. She likes black cats. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Meowzilla. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. This is pretty cool, mind. I do like this. This is the Phantom of the Opera figure from the obviously the the rendition of the early movie. I can't remember the name of the actor. Was it Don Don Chuni or Don? Uh. uh, uh. Mm. Don, you're so close you're so close lon cheney don cheney yeah don lon, cheney lon, lon cheney is it lon or don lon 
Mm. Anyway, let me know in the chat. Fuzzy old characters. Now yeah, I've got a feeling it's Don Cheney, but I might be wrong. Well, anyway, this is Phantom of the Opera. I think this is amazing. This is a one-six scale um, action figure. Um, sorry, Lon Cheney is Lon Cheney the werewolf. Oh, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I'm a bit lost. Fuzzy. Beer Fact with check with Fuzzy. Boy. Fact check with. Let's, let's see. Um, I think the head sculpt on this is pretty yeah, spot on. Right. It looks very cool. Dead man's in the chat. It is Lon Cheney. Yeah, Lon Cheney. Thank you, Dead you Man. Good man. Correcting me. Um, you? Yeah. So I think this looks very, very cool. Yeah. You can get it in the standard, which is that, or you can get it in a, a, a special edition, which comes with the piano, um, which is pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool. Is, there, I want to see, is there pictures of what it looks like with the mask on? You don't get a mask with it. Because in this what? original version, I don't think he has a mask, does he? Oh, you're right. Yeah, this isn't. I the, don't think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a shame because I think when I think Phantom of the Opera, I think the mask. The... No, is it not? He has the mask on and it pulls off, and that's the face. It's the, that's the jump scare of it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever actually seen this this original movie. To be yeah. honest, um, if I have, it's years and years and years ago. Cheers, we'll Efron. Um, years and years ago, I can't can't remember it. Peter think of the politician Dick Cheney. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. He has a very similar look to him. Yeah. Um, um, just saying so you know, this is Jeff. Hey Jeff. Oh hey Jeff. Nice <laughs> to see fellas. you, Jeff. Sorry I'm late. Abigail was fun. Thank you as well. Like it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, yeah. I've heard nothing but great things. So looking forward to seeing that one tomorrow. Yeah. Um. So looking at me notes, prices on this one for the standard. You're looking at around about three hundred dollars, okay. which is pretty pricey. Um, and then for this one with the piano, you're getting closer to the five hundred and fifty dollar mark. So it is. Okay. It is pretty. pretty no, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big piece though. Like yeah. it's, you know. Dead Man's in the original was nineteen twenty five. Wow, wow. Um, everyone probably saw that in the cinema. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> I wouldn't okay. take that effort. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to uh, some some rapid movie reviews. Pick this image, James, because I know this was your favourite scene yeah. in the movie, really, wasn't it? Oh God! Spoilers. This is supposed to be Spoilers. our non-spoiler talk. We yeah, have a spoiler yeah. video yeah. Uh, for this. If anyone has seen it and wants to know our thoughts on this, but um, we'll just give it man little... was at the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just um, just give a little minute on what we thought of it, like not spoiler free for anyone who, who uh, still wants to see it. Um, I thought this was awesome. This is a really great prequel. I think it's a really amazing um, companion piece to that original film. And like having us just watch that quite recently, I think they really went well together. I absolutely love this. I thought this was amazing. Um, like you say, it, it, we just recently watched The Omen and then this came out very shortly afterwards and it fit perfectly. Quite often when you go to say prequels and things like that, there's a bit of a disconnect and all the rest of it. I feel this fitted really, really well with the overall story and with the overall narrative. You get a bit of a link to the to the Omen movie uh, at the end of it. They use some kind of re or very cleverly use some footage and backs of people and things like that to show the link to the other other film. Um, there are some gruesome moments in it. Some bits. The most that... horrific thing I've ever seen. It's in a movie. oh god, oh the most god. horrific, horrible, yeah. disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that bad. I think you're it's you're you're a nurse, yeah. so you've seen shit like that, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so. There are some pretty ropey bits, particularly if you've not witnessed childbirth, shall we say? Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a cool movie. I thoroughly enjoy it. If you like the Omen and you like that kind of movie, that's my kind of horror more than your hackers and your slashers and stuff like that. But if you like that kind of horror, I would very much jump into to this. It's also, I I think one of the scariest films we've had in a while there's one particular sequence in it that like i was just holding my breath like i was so terrified like terrified um mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's really suspenseful and and yeah it's it's just a really good time so yeah well worth checking out well worth yeah. checking out um and then we've got some trailers to talk about we've got maxine now i've seen pearl yes but i haven't seen x yet which yes. is the the one before this isn't it yeah, so X was the first film, and then Pearl was a prequel to X, and now this is the sequel to X. I mean, that's hurting me head already. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we got a trailer for this. I love the look of this. It's just, like they're going full slasher, like an 80s pop kind of Hollywood style to it. I think it looks it looks really fun. I'm really excited. And there's a bit of a whodunit element, I think, that they're setting so, up in this. 
I loved the trailer. It had I loved the kind of the the eighties music and style yeah. and all the rest of it. Basically, the trailer tells a bit of a story about this adult um, industry actress who wants to hit it big in Hollywood, and she she's on the sets of things like Psycho and things like that, the Norman Bates Hotel and all that kind of jazz. And it's about her trying to rise in in the the the, the Hollywood stardom, as it were. And alongside that, you have this kind of narrative of news reports of somebody's out there killing girls and, and murdering people. And then very quickly, it seems to be that some of the people around her are being bumped off left, right and centre. Um, I don't know. I don't know, James. I got very much the vibes. And I don't know if it's just because you become, you know, looking for the, the, the twists, as it were. I very much got the vibe that she's going to be the killer in this and she's bumping off on me. I, 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 mean, I mean, to me, it feels, that feels too obvious. But I well, think, that's what I thought. It felt telegraphed. That would almost be a combination of like X and Pearl, because that's, you know, Pearl is yeah. her going on a map, her wanting to be famous and killing people yeah. around her. Like, she's killing a competition, could be yeah. what setting up, but then you're just sort of retreading Pearl, I feel. Um, but yeah, I, I like how, like, Pearl being an outlier, the first X is very much like a Texas Chainsaw kind of homage, and I think this is more of a, like, your 80s, Friday the 13th kind of is style she, of a horror movie, you know? Is she playing the same character? In all of these movies no so she's the, the maxine is one of the main characters in x and then she just plays pearl as well in the prequel because there's a, bit where she, there's a bit where she goes oh I, you look so much like me when i was younger because pearl pearl is such a weird film in terms of how it's shot and all the rest of it yeah i did wonder watching this if she's starring in pearl if this character was the actress in pearl do you know what i mean and that's one of the films she's made. So that that's a great theory, Peter. That's actually mm. that that that's plausible. If when you see X, you'll understand. But that's plausible within the world uh, that, okay. that could be that could be the case. Um, but yeah, no. So like in X, Pearl is a character in X when she's old, and okay. so she says, "Oh, you look just like me when I was younger." So they had her play Pearl in okay. Pearl, and then this is just the follow up to that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I was I was. Yeah, I love X so much. So I was looking forward to this, but after this trailer, I'm like, I'm really hyped now. Like, I'm really excited for this. I'm going to have to get the best of the year. I'm going to have to get X watched. I'm going to have to watch that before I watch this. Then yeah, we have yeah. on. I'll be right back for the week yeah. this comes out. So oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Oh, I'll I'll leave it till then. Then. Yeah. So yeah, this trailer looks cool. I'd recommend people check it out. It certainly looks very interesting. And then we get this. This is um, the latest from J. Michael. You mm-hmm. mean? M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan, yeah. M. Night Shyamalan. Um, that's, one, that's what I said. Yeah. Um, this is the latest <laughs> said from him. It's J. Scott or something. James <laughs> Shyamalan. Um, this is the latest from him. This is um, Trap. Th- this kind of... So he's very famous for having twists in his movies and stuff like that. And it felt to me watching this trailer that war shown what the twist is I, 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 kind of, you, stole, you kind stole the words be. out you stole the words out of my mouth peter like yeah. I, you would have thought you'd see this thing and it's like uh you're seeing clips out of context and it's like josh hart and it's like the the caring dad who's worried now yeah. his daughter is trapped in a place with a serial killer and then it's like oh he's the serial killer so like that that i would have thought they would have not shown that and then 20 yeah. minutes into the movie you're like oh shit you know that's unless the way that's the ball drops. unless that's not the twist do you know what I mean? We're going to these movies expecting a twist from. Shimmer. There's always there always is a twist though. Yeah, you know? um, yeah. So th- there must be. So for people who haven't seen this trailer, basically this is a, a loving father and daughter go to some big um, musical event. Kind of and like a Taylor Swifty concert kind of. Yeah, thing, yeah. Like, yeah. And when they're in there, he goes in. He goes to buy popcorn or something, and he spots that um, there's an awful lot of police presence. So he asks one of the guys. And as they would, you know, they just tell him, oh, we're, we think there's a serial killer in the building, so we're locking it down kind of thing. And then you kind of get the revelation that he is the serial killer. Um, or he's got certainly got people locked up at home and things like that. Um, I, I liked the trailer. I'll go and see it because I do enjoy um, Chamelet's, um movies. So I'm just going to keep <laughs> Shamon's, you know, whatever. <laughs> I like his <laughs> Shamalama Ding Dong's movies. Yeah. Um, but, but... I kind of feel now the poor guy has done himself a disservice because I expect some kind of big revelation twist at every movie of his I go and see. So if this is just a straight kind of... If there's no twist in this, I'll probably come out disappointed because I kind of feel like I know what the twist was already, if that makes sense. 
Um, yeah, I, I think there will be. Like, uh, I, so I haven't seen, I didn't see the last one, the knock at the cabin, but my understanding is like there's no twist and that's the twist kind of thing. It, I mean, there, is, yeah, there, there isn't. Yeah. It, it's, it's actually worth watching. It's a good, good I, I will, movie. I, I will, I'll get around to it at some point. But, yeah. um, you know, Splish had a twist and Glass. Glass was sort of the culmination of something, so that did yeah. not so much. Um, but Olds had a really good twist. So... Like, there's going to be one in here, surely. Maybe it's like he's not the killer that they're after. He just happens to be yeah, there as well. happens to be there. Like that, you know, and another character will be revealed uh, to be the killer. And I guess what I would say as well is Josh Hartnett there. Love him so much. He's so yeah. great. And he, he went away for so long. Yeah. I'm just happy he's back. He's such a great actor. Um, So, he, like, I'm I'm stoked for this. I, I love the trailer. I think it's such yeah. a great... A, a lot of Shyamalan stuff... The, just the like the blurb of it is so interesting and like yeah. old i think the idea of like oh the people are on a, this beach are aging really rapidly randomly for some reason that's a really cool idea that would this have been is, this, this is a very cool idea like I old think. would have been such a good film if it had better acting talent in it because hey, some it's of, a werewolf by night style. oh i know but some of the acting in that is just atrocious i mean it's like proper cringe act- i had no issue with the acting whatsoever yeah but you know you, we've discovered you like white chicks. Some, do you know what I mean? Great, so you can't some, comment. This, you this, can't I, comment. I don't, I don't you know think white chicks is good, but I like it. I can distinguish between a good thing. And You've a lost thing all like. credibility with our audience, okay. Keaton. It's terrible. Okay. Um, Let's shut okay. the channel down. Let's the end stream. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel. Um, this kind of leads we into to t- tonight's topic. So as we know, Shamalama Ding Dong is famous for his twist ends. Um, and obviously that kind of the trend started with this phenomenal phenomenal movie sixth sense and um, so spoilers ahead but that was really a twist that i don't think many people saw coming if they didn't already know about it do you know what i mean so wanted to talk a little bit tonight about movies that have got some interesting twists and turns in them stick in the comments please those of you that are watching any twists or turn movies that you particularly enjoy and if you're watching on the rewind please do also comment along so i put a few on here james just to kind of talk to about and i guess i wanted to start with friday the 13th which is a i think our first kind of show okay. that we did yeah first, really. first video we put out was i'll be right yeah. back um, and we had the revelation that you know it was the crazy mother all along yep i mean the crazy mother that you don't meet until the moment she shows up and yeah. she's the killer so I, I think that's that's a case where it's not it's almost not even really a twist because like she's not in the movie prior to that happening you know like she shows up it's maybe two or three minutes of her kind of there and then you find out it's her whereas i think like she should have been throughout the movie you know there should have been scenes I, earlier where she was there being a normal citizen you know you see i, I completely agree with you and I and I have to say, thinking back to this now, after we've done the show, I think for younger people getting into the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, this is a fantastic twist. Oh, that's because, not Jason. Yeah, because if they yeah. go into the franchise now, known the Jason law and how you are, and then they go back and watch the first Friday the Thirteenth, you are absolutely expecting Jason to be the killer. So it really is a kind of a what the fuck is this? What what's going on here? That's a you fair know? point, or just the uh, the fact that oh the killer is this old woman. I think yeah. is, you know, I mean superhumanly strong old woman. Yeah, yeah Do you know what I mean? Man, so, bare hands. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 But I think I think that's a good twist. Bates Motel. I've put that image on there because I just think it's striking. But basically, now, any I just of the recently um, watched like some clips from its take on Psycho. Amazing. Like literally in the last week or so, and I'm like, oh, that's that's really clever, and yeah. I think that was really cool. And Rihanna as Marion Crane, stunning, it's a cool idea. Stunning. I remember watching the original. I can't remember if it's Psycho One or Psycho Two. And do you know how it's the for me with horror, it's the it's not the gruesome deaths and murders and chops up and things like that. It's the more subtle stuff. So in one of them, I can't remember which one it is. Like I say, whether it's Psycho One or Psycho Two, um, but there's a scene where there's a, a policeman kind of talking to Norman. And it's a hot day and there's a, one of those American kind of big ice buckets outside. Have you seen this scene? And the night before, Norman's killed someone and put the body in there. And the cops picking up chunks of ice and eating the ice to cool himself down. That, and must some of the, sec- that sounds so good to us. There must be the second one, I think. Some of the ice he's picking up soaked in blood. And he's yeah. popping in his mouth. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's the second movie. No, that's, that's, that's not a Hitchcock, yeah. Ray Hitchcock thing to do, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the the twist in obviously the first cycle that it's Norman dressed up as his mother, 
was just, I mean, I remember not watching it at the cinema, but I remember watching that movie for the first time when I was younger and being blown away by that. It's, it's common now, isn't it? Everybody knows Norman's the killer. Yeah. But that's the thing. when so that like, psycho first up, came out, you know, yeah. it was. Me growing up, I've never not known that he was yeah. the killer in it, you know, so that, that's, I'll never experience that. It's so ingrained in pop culture. And I think that's the problem with a lot of these twist movies. I mean, Fuzzy said there, one trick pony sound like style over substance and that his films ha don't have great rewatchability. I absolutely agree with that because once the, once the twist or the trick is out there and it's lived in pop culture for a while, the, the kind of the impact of some of the movie, I think, or almost loses itself a bit. I, it's interesting because I sort of think the opposite. I think when there's a really good twist and it's like, oh, it's been this the entire time. You want to go back and rewatch it because you want to see did they did they see that throughout the movie? Like so with Bruce, Bruce Willis, it's like no one else directly yeah. communicates with him. You know, it makes sense. Oh, it's a thing you didn't yeah. notice that like oh that's the revelation. So I think I think Sixth Sense, at least one more rewatch for that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Definitely. Just to just yeah, to check I, it out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Dead Man saying when Fuzzy mentioned Bates Motel last week, I've now been binge watching it. Haven't got to the end yet. Does it end as it should? I'm not going to spoil it for you, mate, because it, it yeah. deviates a little. But it's a it's a well, it, 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 yeah. It's, it's an good. interesting modern take, I think, on yeah. on on Psycho. Like yeah. the, the last season is a, a Psycho adaptation, effectively. It's very cool. And again, I cannot I cannot not say how amazing all of the cast in that are. Not just the mains, but you know there are some the last few episodes, there's some genuinely heart wrenching stuff in there. You know, yeah. the actor it, actor I really love in it. Um, it's escaping me now. I didn't actually see a scene with her in it, but she she's um like his brother's girlfriend or something. Oh uh, yeah. Do you know who that? Do you know the actress's name? Nah, that is the one in the wheelchair. I don't know if she's in a wheelchair in it. Um, yeah. I haven't. Seen, I just saw that on Wikipedia that she was in it. I was like, oh, I love the actress. Yeah. Um, I'm just yeah. Lying, you know. Um, Fuzzy's just saying the Prestige, one of my all time favorite movies. The Prestige, just stunned, absolutely stunned. Have you seen that one, James? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. The, the, Christian Bell and yeah. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Hugh Jackman, yeah. Horrifying as well at the end. Yeah. Um, Usual Suspect, absolutely. One of the best films I've ever seen. That, that bit where Kaiser Soze walks away with the, at the uh, end. With the limp and then it's the yeah, limp gets away. Yeah, uh, just amazing. I actually, absolutely on the topic of I, I, I saw that in Scary Movie. Scary Movies ends with that. Um, Does it? Yeah, and it, it, it's I love the music, the song that they played during it. So I'm just going to yeah. watch the usual stuff. I was like, oh, I like the scary movie version more. Yeah, <laughs> you know? very cool. it's funny. Um, I put Scream on here, and I don't necessarily mean for the twist ends no, in it's... terms of the the who done it and stuff at, at the end. It's always the opening scene for me. Oh, hundred percent. For Scream One, it's that I genuinely thought, you know, um, oh, what's her name? I mean, escapes it. Yeah, Drew Barrymore was the, the star character. of the yeah. movie, you know? She was hot shit at the time. Like, Yeah. Um, now, I know you're a big fan of, of that franchise, James. Do you like the twists and turns that Scream gives you? Yeah, I, I, I've never been super surprised in any of them who the killer is. Like, it's never the last person you expect. Because, you, 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 you know, going into them, you're yeah. always... It's usually the motivation that I find the interesting part of it. Um I'm never like, oh my god, that's the last person I expected to. Yeah. Um, but you're absolutely right about the screen. But that that itself is actually a call to back to Psycho because in Psycho it was um, what's the, the the lead actress's name in Psycho? That the star, mm. Mary Mary mm. Crane. Anyway, that actress was like the biggest star in Hollywood at the time. Mm. And the first forty minutes, it's this story of this woman who's stealing money from her boss and you know the the camera keeps going to the money and the money is obviously super important and she's like you know nearly gets caught multiple times she gets to this hotel and you assume you would assume at the time that oh this guy's gonna attack her and then she's gonna yeah. try to get her money back he's gonna steal the money because he's in financial problems and then you know she's gonna try and get the money back and then he kills her and he dumps the money like the bag not knowing there's even money in it, you know yeah, yeah. and it's just yeah. gone and that's it and that's not the movie anymore and like that would yeah. it must have been like that's the greatest twist i think of all time is like that actress that yeah. character dies you know the lead character dies yeah. halfway through the movie i want to go back and rewatch psycho now I'm, I'm feeling the need to go and watch it um oh god almighty have you seen this the mist uh I, so i have but very long ago i don't remember that much from it so, so spoilers, people. This is a brilliant movie. Um, 
about basically creatures appearing um, in in the mist and killing people left, right, and center. And the the kind of the twist bit here is at the end, they've tried to escape, and he's with some various people from the diner, and he's with his son. And the creatures are surrounding them, and they can hear them moving towards them in the mist. And nobody wants to be killed by the creatures, as it were, because of the horrific things they do to them. So he kills everybody in the car, and then he shoots his son to save his son from the horror of, of the creatures. And then you've got him sat there in the car with the, all the dead bodies. And as the mist clears, it's the military walking towards them to save them. And they've, the, all the monsters have been killed, yeah. and he's murdered everybody in the car for, for, for no, no reason, reason really. Yeah, yeah. Just a brilliant... I love a movie where we don't necessarily get a happy ever after. I like... I, don't don't you don't always have to neatly tie it up with a ribbon for us and everybody lives happily ever after do you know what i mean i think it's balls actually i think yeah yeah so i love this movie it's well worth well worth watching um was he saying it was janet lee yeah she's she's someone's mom yeah is it is it jamie jamie the curtis jamie curtis i think oh right that's her that's her mom yeah yeah because that's why that's sort of she was starting halloween then there was sort of a mirror there like I liked Seven didn't cre- credit Kevin Spacey or announce he was in it. Um, so when he appeared as the killer, everyone was shocked. Yeah, yeah. I've never that's seen that. good. You've never seen it? What's no, in the my, box? My, my, What's in that's, the that's box? the thing. I, I used to be a running gag in when I was in college that I was like, I don't know what's in the box. And then yeah. I, I rented it out of the library. I had it for six months and I didn't watch it on, on DVD. Mm. So I just like very good yeah, yeah. very good movie that's yeah. the kind of i mean it's not horror it's, it's more kind of crime detective sounds of the lambs kind of stuff yeah. but that's the kind of film i really enjoy i've and seen clips of it like i know the i know like the color palette of it like David yeah Hitler style and you know morgan freeman um and mm. and brad pitt absolutely amazing in it just mm. just stunning just stunning um and some really interesting deaths as well and yeah. um, fuzzy saying the mist the most depressing end to a film ever absolutely just just heartbreaking heartbreaking mist is brilliant brilliant one and oh, phone booth now dead man that's a film i've seen but i can't remember the end oh i love that movie i love that movie so much um yeah it's like the uh, con farrell and he's keeper for something yeah. on the phone to him and he's like the sniper thing that's such a great movie not really a horror you, but like i love that one i tell you another one that i really like but i kind of is it ryan reynolds great buried? twist in yeah where he's he's been kidnapped in, in the burial yeah yeah he's, he's in the coffin and all through the movie they're kind of trying to get to him he's talking to people and stuff yeah in the end and they bury him they find the box and they dig the box and it's not him and he's not the wrong box, box. A different box yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's the wrong like, box oh, just like i know shit moments yeah um yeah horrific horrific yeah. in terms of like Shyamalan twists um one of my favorite twists in any horror movie the visit have you ever seen the visit is that the one with the grandparents yeah the, yeah, it's a bit telegraphed. You know that they're not the grandparents. I, I didn't. I didn't. Really? Didn't even. Yeah, completely missed it. So the, the, there's the kind of the ball drops where there's. It's about this um, woman who's estranged from her mom, and so the mom says, "I want to spend time with the grandkids." So she drops off the house, doesn't say hi to her or anything. So the kids are spending time with the grandparents. The grandparents are very, acting very strange. There's kind of some spooky, you know, standing yeah. in the hallways kind of stuff. And then later on in the movie, the daughter is video chatting with her mom and she's like, oh, show me your grandma. And she shows her and she goes, where's your grandma? And she goes, that's her there doing the thing. And, yeah. and she goes, that's not your grandma. So it's yeah. like these two, the hospital, it's, they've escaped psych, from psych the wards, asylum, people escaped yeah. and killed the grandparents and they're like pretending they are because the, the kids have never met the grandparents and so they don't know yeah. that's not them. Um, but I, I was like, that my heart sunk, I remember at the time in the really? cinema, I was like, shit. So like, I, I think that's a great one, yeah. It is a good movie, that one. Actually, it is a very yeah. good movie. Cabin in the that. Woods? Oh, Cabin in the Brilliant Woods. Brilliant twist, Cabin in the Woods, I think. Yeah. Um, it's almost from the get-go, the movie's, the twist is almost at the start, really, of the movie, yeah. like, of, of what the actual thing is, you know, that's, that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I, like, love, I mean, how, Cabin in the Woods is, the end. Yeah. is a film we've talked about before that we're going to do a review on, because that's yeah. a, just a classic. I love Cabin in the Woods. Um. I wanted to mention Oculus. I don't know. Have you seen this one? With um... I've seen this. No, an Oculus. No, I have. I was thinking. Weekly. Very, yeah, very cool. It. It's um. Oh, what do you call it? She plays Nebula. She was in in Doctor Who. Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan plays the lead character, and it's about basically a demonic mirror. And all through the movie, they're trying to smash the mirror and get rid of it. And and I'll not spoil it for people who haven't seen it, because the twist at the end is just. I remember watching it and just thinking i knew what was going to happen next 
yeah. and then it ends and just thinking what the shit how's yeah. um just brilliant wicker man to do a sequel i'm not sure i'm not sure i've only do, seen the yeah. first one i've okay. only seen the yeah. first one wicker man obviously kind of kind of expected now because we've seen it do you know what i mean but back in the day when this first came out the the twist at the end of of them killing the main character and them being no kind of retribution just the bad guys win not the bees not the bees yeah. oh god not, <laughs> not the nicholas cage version yeah. I thought it's i've never cage seen the original i've only seen the nick cage you've never seen the original no oh, the, the, the original is edward woodward um and it is just it, it is really quite dark and disturbing so again another good twist and then can't not mention saw yeah. um and yeah, again you've got all your different traps and all that kind of stuff but the thing that stands out for me is when he stands up at the end yeah, he's been lying him, on the floor him, him all that time room. yeah yeah brilliant i think absolutely just fantastic. absolutely amazing absolutely yeah. amazing um and then this i wanted to mention this 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 is obviously um the shining and this is one of those twists that i don't understand i don't, I don't understand i don't get it what, what's don't, going on get it. What, what, is it? what is it like I don't understand what it's implying. I don't get what it means. I, I, just... I remember watching The Shining because I'd only seen The Shining for the first time um, when Doctor Sleep was coming out. So I was like, yeah. oh, I better watch it for the new one. And I, I remember looking it up and it was something to do with like his spirit is sort of trapped in the the hotel or something. I don't so know. Here's, it doesn't make sense to me. Still here's sense the thing. Really. Here's the thing. There are some horror movies and movies in general that people kind of rave about and, and oh it's amazing it's like art and blah blah blah. and the shining being one of them it's kind of held up there as one of the best movies horror movies and then i watch them and i just think i don't know what people are seeing in this because i have to say the shining for me isn't that great it oh do, it doesn't... peter it's the shining it's brilliant but it's, like, it's, it, it's is it yeah what is it's, it it's so creepy like Maybe Come on, there's cool. the bit where the the, you know, there's the, bit with the little red girls, rum, red rum, red, red rum, rum, the little mm. fucking fat but, right. bear guy so giving it's, it's, the guy right. the blows I'll, up, you know, and stuff. I'll give like, you it's, it's creepy, I'll give you it's creepy, but what does it mean? What What's it all, what, what is it, what, what's the story? What does anything mean, Peter? <laughs> you know, what, like, is what is life? What is life? <laughs> what is? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think... I don't think you actually necessarily even need to understand something to think to enjoy it or to think it's good, you know? Like you I don't, don't, I don't need don't... to understand the movie to enjoy it. You just need no, to look at the pictures. I'm a simple man words. with simple taste, Peter. We've established this many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I might need to go back. Let let one know in the comments if you're live or uh, just watching this on the rewind. Let one know in the comments. Am I missing a trick here? Do I need to go back and rewatch the shine and to fully appreciate and understand what the shit's going there on. There is like various 1920s kind of like all the spooky stuff is sort of 1920s stuff, yeah. you know. So it's like I guess he's maybe he's the reincarnation of this guy, or the photo is his spirit trapped in the photo, and like all the you know he's not necessarily from that. You know, I don't like want to that. work too hard. Do you know what I mean? Speaking of trapped photos, the one we've not talked about that I just want to mention is sinister. There's yeah. a good twist at the end of that with the, kids, the killers. The, and, yeah, 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 I think so. Um, mm. I really like Jordan Peele. Like, uh, he's kind of doing some Shyamalan stuff with his movies. I think this twist, yeah. I think Get Out has a really great twist. The whole, yeah. like, what, what, the, what the kind of the, the, the plan is, really, yeah. for, you know, for him and the, how that's seeded earlier in the movie when he's talking to other people. Um, I, I really, I know you're not a fan of the movie, but nope. Um, oh, okay. The, I think the twist that it's not a spaceship; it's like actually the creature. I think that's a really cool take on that, you know, on the flying saucer thing. So I the twist that. in that movie is that they've tricked you into sitting through all that shit for two hours of There's your There's some great stuff in that movie. I I enjoyed it. I There's a monkey. I, was I'll give you I think I think monkey. us 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 is a bit uh, telegraphed. I think it's a bit obvious. Yeah, and a bit convoluted, but like, yeah, I, I, you know. I, I think me and Fuzzy are of two minds. He's, he's always very much, uh, very often similar mind to me. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, that that's that's enough twist ends. Some good ones there. Some good ones to go and check out. Um, and that's the end of tonight's show. If we can just thank you all because we've got up to two hundred and seventy-one subs, which is friggin' amazing for a little channel like ours. So over a couple 50. of months. 50 up from last episode, yeah. which is crazy. Like we're almost at 275. Which crazy. Is 
Absolutely I've actually gone crazy. up since you took this photo. I think it's 274 or something. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, amazing. Um, like, uh, is great. Yeah. Can't thank you enough. Please do continue to support. Please do um, shout and um, scream and point people in our direction. We need word of mouth. We need more people watching. So really do appreciate anything you can do to promote what we channel. Um, because it is, it's it's going well, and we really are enjoying doing this stuff. Yeah. Dean's just jumping in here to say the shining is so overrated. Nicholson goes from sane to mad with nothing in between. The book is gradual madness, so much more effective. Fair, very fair. Yeah, I would agree with that, Dean. I would agree with that. Mm. Fuzzy's in pleasure, chaps. Always great times these Friday lives. Love your work. Thank you, Fuzzy. Um, and if you are new to the channel or new to the What Catch Up, please do check out some of the other shows. We've got I'll Be Right Back, which is our movie review. Um, we've recently done Godzilla, um, which was great fun. Uh, I think it's fair to say I probably enjoyed this movie more than you, James. But so you, 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 you're a charming bastard. I went to going, bastard. yikes. You're a charming is, bastard. Is, you're a charming bastard, Peter. Like Terry Wogan, um, I, I, went, I went in going, oh, this movie sucked. And then you talked me over by the end of it where I was like, oh, I was pretty, all right. It was pretty good. You know, you do it every time. I like it when you hate the movie and I love the movie because I won't <laughs> yeah. I won't back down when I love something like I'll <laughs> defend it to the end of the earth you know I don't we've not had many where we've disagreed really have we we disagree on almost all of them Peter unless yeah. we both yeah. we both we either both love them there's one we both hated and then the rest of them we were like one of us loved it and one of us hated it so <laughs> yeah um, I did want to mention that there's a whole host of really cool videos out there for you to go check out and um, we've got stuff on every flavor of horror that you can imagine little reviews or more meaty reviews so please do go check out some of those um, and give them a bit of love because they are great great um, work that James has put a lot of time and effort into editing so thank you for that James we've got all the live shows as well now these really do need a bit of love we, we are um not getting as many views as i might have hoped for for the live shows so please do encourage people to watch and point people in the direction to go and check them out in the uh, on the rewind for all of the weekly news and gossip and all that kind of stuff mm. well worth checking out oh dear oh dear oh dear and then uh, coming up next week on i'll be right back we're doing um the, the, i i did this thumbnail like before we even started the sh like doing the channel like i had this ready to pop go i want to do this since the beginning scooby doo on zombie island perfect timing because velma's coming out next week as well um this is i think the best scooby doo thing so i i i love this one i know i'm I, i'm stretching the word horror a little bit with this but it, you know indulge me i work hard so <laughs> this will be this will be fun i'm very excited I'm, I'm nervous but i'm excited to see what you think of it i mean i am a I am a. I am a um, casual. How dare you, fussy? <laughs> Excuse me. I will not have any. any I, I shit enjoyed talking Scooby Doo. Okay. I enjoyed the Sarah Michelle Gellar live action Scooby Doo movies, and I have watched Scooby Doo now and then. I'm really interested how I'm going to feel about this because yeah. it's it's Scooby Doo, isn't it? It's yeah. it's. The car room for you also you also might notice a little bit of a parallel between our logo there and yeah. uh and the, the the poster which is is not a coincidence i'll say so yeah. i've just realized i'm scooby in that honor so who are you are you velma who are you i'm fred oh you're fred okay yeah. okay um <laughs> okie dokie right well ladies and gents that is your whack and um, thank you so much for watching tonight it's been a great, great um, show. So thank you for all of your support. Um, and James, is there anything else you want to see? Well, Peter, well, well, I think whether or not it's Halloween, everyone's entitled to one good scare. Everyone's entitled.